All right, welcome to the unwrapping of The Chip Is Stale, uh, an album by Luanster. We're gonna unwrap this CD um, and just see what it looks like. But before we do that, we've gotta buy it. Let's buy the CD. So we're gonna go on the side, we're on the side, click on the product, add to bag. Okay, cool. We've just bought The Chip Is Stale by Luanster. As you can see, here's proof. Thank you for your order, I bought it. Fantastic, thank you, you can get out of the way. All right, so in my hands right now is The Chip Is Stale by Lawrence on CD. It says owner's manual, which is interesting. I'm interested in exploring that, but let's look at the album cover for a moment. One of the first things that catches your eye about this particular album cover is the color red. You know, the strong red, it's a warm color and warm colors are known to advance versus cool colors that recede. So your sale uh, signs in the malls uh, will be red. Warning signs will be red because they're meant to grab your attention. And this was actually inspired by the stop sign, which is one of the greatest pieces of design ever, if you think about it. You get to it and you stop, you know? You know what to do when you get there. The color red here is chosen functionally uh, to also be on, to be experienced on social media, which is, which has cool colors. Like an Instagram has a cool color palette, which is, you know, predominantly white. Back when it was Twitter, it was blue, but it's still a, you know, white color palette. Um, a cool color palette, Facebook as well. A lot of the social media platforms uh, have cooler color palettes with their UX design and UI design. And for this to stand out, it's gonna be very easy in comparison to somebody that maybe is just white or that is darker. Uh, so yeah, functionally red was used to be able to catch people's attention or at the very least slow down you're scrolling with your thumb and then you kind of have a look at it. So it's meant to be eye-catching, like the sale sign, like the stop sign, you know. Um, but yeah, it's mostly inspired by the stop sign because the theme of the whole project is, you know, connected to like vehicle culture and, you know, cars and signs and whatnot. Yeah. This is a very minimalist approach uh, on this particular album cover. You can see by its flat colors, uh, and limited color palette, so the flat color background, very reminiscent. In fact, I think this was actually inspired by the international typographic style or Swiss style uh, design movement uh, back in the day where they used predominantly typographic layouts. As you can see, we've got typography playing a predominant role on this album cover, um, as opposed to his previous efforts, which had Spajonged written in small, the Spajonged EPs didn't even have typography on them. Um, and I think he had said, you know, I, I think I had said um, something about being a little bit of a, afraid of typography. Um, not being able to use it functionally in that time. So here we've used it incredibly functionally where it even has a lot of motion graphic potential. It has a lot of movement that's suggested even by the move, uh, the placement, the layout, the, the tilt, the five degree tilt uh, suggests some sort of movement already um, because it isn't straight and it, it's very predominantly typographic which was very exciting and intentional to explore. We said lowercase t because we really, really liked um, what the, the, I think it's called a, not an at, at apex or just a little stem. Uh, no, not stem, man. What is this thing called? Okay, we'll figure it out. I'll put it on the screen. But I uh, really like how it curved. Uh, on the lowercase t and I didn't want to lose that. So we just decided, you know what, let's just make it a lowercase t. It's very much a taste thing. So we have our image treatment, which has been run through uh, the threshold effect on Photoshop, just in an attempt to limit the color palette even further. You know, uh, we wanted a very limited color palette with just like red, white, and black. And running it through threshold gives us like a, a slightly vectorized effect that could even be recreated on, you know, screen printing, which obviously relies on uh, limited color palettes if you want to do something that's affordable. Anyway, and you find that the, the typography and everything else is tilted at that five degree angle, which kind of suggests a incline of sorts. Like if you're clutch balancing on an incline uh, going up a, a hill of sorts. So um, yeah, this is interesting. If you look to our side, we find the CD information. 
Uh, we've got the, the, the catalog number, which is Norm CD02. We've got the album uh, title and the artist name. And then we've got the normal logo right at the end. And it happens on the same side with the normal logo being white because it's on red. Uh, it's normally, I guess, you know, red. And then, yeah, same information. And then we get back to our back cover. We go to our back cover, which is written in Roman numerals, which is interesting. I wonder what the vibe was there, but it's interesting. I kind of like it. I fuck with it. Um, so then we have the track list. Features are written in all uppercase as well. Uh, producers don't show up on this. I think it would have been a bit too wordy, uh, which, you know, gives us an opportunity to explore more in the booklet itself. So one thing you'll also notice is that the certain songs have extensions to their track titles. So Clutch Balance is also time it in brackets which refers to the first half before it switches up in the record and we have normal the brief which is just an extension of the theme of the record you know uh, I won't spoil it you'll listen to it when it comes out but it's just those two records again back cover is also tilted to a five degree as it as if it were climbing or driving up a mountain and losing power uh, and then we have signs you have these signs these warning lights that show up on your dashboard uh, when you're driving, you've got your airbag light, you've got your doors ajar light, you've got your uh, clutch, no, not clutch, handbrake, handbrake sign, your parking sign, and your battery. Yeah, you'll read these when you get in there. So there's like 10 of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, ten. And then there's ten tracks. So, I'll, you know, I guess each is connected to a record. Then there's some information just about the producers. Uh, all songs produced by Luanste, except Are You Please, Toro, Wano, One Convo, KB, Violent Cartoon, Steven is, Steve is French, and of course, live music, Oshoku. And then copyright information, a QR code, and a barcode, because we're trying to go platinum. Yeah. So anyway, without further ado, let us open it up. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay, a speedometer extending... Uh, the theme of you know the car the vehicle you know and this could have been a rim could have been a tire or everything that's round in a car but I think we thought that the speedometer is a lot more interesting in that it has a lot more information that can be played around with and just like you know looked at you know so uh, you have your catalog number copyright information normal website normal logo and then the battery sign and then the handbrake uh, sign and then we have these numbers here 2024 1005 which is the 10th of May 2024 which is the release of the album um, that's interesting shout out this is great I like this this is cool now if you remove that oh wow it's like you've opened the bonnet of a vehicle and now you are in the engine you can see our little oil icon there uh, so these hands are busy working on the vehicle doing the work to do all that to do but rather you get it parallels and I'll unpack that further in a little bit but anyway you open up and then you see you know similar to how you would open up the bonnet of a vehicle um, and then yeah this is really interesting I really like that and then if we bring back our speedometer and place it where it needs to be leave it there and then we get into the booklet we can see at the back is a stop ignoring the signs we see our tilted angle on everything there's our QR code our copyright information now let's open this booklet let's open our owner's manual and find out what it is that makes this an owner's value. We open it up, first page. In fact, before I get started, Vinoanster posted this. Well, not this, uh, the Opal Corsa Light booklet, uh, the owner's manual. And he captioned it saying, um, what did he say? Imagine one of these, but for humans. I guess this is what he meant. So stop ignoring the signs. The first page will show all the signs or majority of the signs that you find in the car. We've got our 10 though here. And then what it says on the first page, it says, congratulations on acquiring your very own owner's manual, a comprehensive guide designed to help you navigate the complexities of life and prioritize your well-being. This manual serves as your personal dashboard, highlighting subtle signals in your physical, mental, and emotional health that may indicate underlying concerns. That's so interesting because at the core or rather the overall 
overarching theme of this album release campaign is called Stop Ignoring the Signs because it explores the parallels between older vehicles that have underlying issues like a burnt alternator that only started burning by owner number three or number four and then by the time it gets to you as owner number seven you're inheriting these things and you only realize it once it breaks down similar to how as humans we only really discover our triggers and our traumas once we've broken down and you become aware that oh then suddenly you become aware of signs so it was a nice concept to explore the parallels between Valoista and his Opal Corsa 2005 which we see here hey love of my life Oh, I mean light of my life, because it's a course of light. <laughs> cool. Tracks. Okay, this is interesting. We get into the tracks. That We've got a predominant uh, typographic layout, which is exciting, which is good. We can see it goes off the page, similar to how it appears on the front cover, which is great. Cohesive, you know, following through. So we have that predominance. And then beneath it, we have liner notes, which is, you know, showing the information and who contributed, who collaborated and whatnot. And then beneath it, now we get interesting information about these signs that we had initially seen on the back cover. Right. These are the signs when we say stop ignoring the signs. These are some of the signs. So we find our airbag system warning light. Right. That represents isolation. How do you say? Pay attention to feelings of withdrawal or distancing oneself from others as a protective measure against emotional pain and vulnerability. So like uh, an airbag, it exists to protect you, you know, from emotional pain and vulnerability. Well, not really, but like physical pain. Uh, so in this case, being a bubble boy, you know, being afraid of the world, you know, the movie Bubble Boy with Jake Gyllenhaal being based on like a real person who would die if they weren't existing in a bubble. You know, it's there to protect you. So isolation is the theme of Bubble Boy because Bubble Boy is afraid of the world. It's hard to trust the world. He's afraid of getting hurt. He's from Kokstad and now he's in Joburg and he's heard so many scary things about Joburg. So he just wants to navigate it in the safest way possible. And the safest way seems like to be in his bubble, which also can represent this vehicle that he's in. But anyway, I'm not gonna go through each track. We're gonna go through each page and just have a look. Um, but are you pleased more cut off but you can still make it out which is still interesting because it's still we, we you know you don't want to be spoon fed because you can see the track titles already at the back so this is just you know an extension of the existing layout which is really cool i think it's pretty cool okay cool we go white when it comes to clutch balance and one convo and these are singles these are singles from the album and these are their cover arts actually yeah these are their cover arts. so these are based on the cover art of each of the singles that has come out, which is interesting. I like that they've extended that. Um, and then we have Normal The Brief, interesting as well. More cut off than any of the others. It's a mouthful, not really, but it's a lot of words. Is it though? Because Violent Cartoons and Corsa Light Music and Passenger Prince are pretty long. But anyway, we'll see when we get there. And then we've got Balwanster looking into the abyss. You know, this is interesting. I lock it. Oh, we still see our... Okay, so these images, the photo, yes, we did say it was filtered through the threshold effect. I like that. And then we get violent cartoons, course of light music. Okay, cool. They do fit a lot better than normal the brief, which is ironic. Not really, but you know what I mean. So, and then office days. Ah, there we go. All the singles are treated with their initial album cover. I mean, single cover artwork. Uh, on, on on white which is which is cool i like how they did that to make it stand out and to identify the singles and we have good company and then we have passenger prints and then we have the last page which is the actual liner notes so executive production mixing and mastering in art direction uh creative and art direction graphic design augmented reality you know all sorts of things you know from styling to marketing council to motor council you know uh yeah this is really great this is cool this is a wonderful booklet you can't hold a spotify you can't hold an apple music um so how do you kind of nurture that relationship with an album with music when music drops every friday you know and then by the eighth friday you've forgotten about what dropped maybe three fridays ago because you don't have anything to hold i mean i'm gonna smell this Smells like a CD. Yep, smells like a CD. Um, don't ask me what that smells like. I know it smells like ink, paper, and whatnot, but it smells interesting. It has a smell, is the point I'm trying to make, as opposed to not having anything other than a look and a sound, which is, you know, the digital age format. So, 
I'm a CD baby. This is the stuff that I came up on and I'm very excited to have one of these. Uh, get one yourself, this is cool. This is exciting. Uh, shout out to Normal, shout out to Pine Monster, shout out to everybody involved in making this. Uh, keen to check it out. And yeah, let's go.